Sydney makes her bid for a little piece of history. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of The Run of the Race. It is Winterbottom Stakes edition. I'm Brittany Taylor. I am with Mark Warwood. And Mark, we spoke last week about would it be East v West, but... The Eastern Status has got us again on the winter bottom. Yeah, I think they've won eight of the last 11 editions of the winter bottom. There were seven interstate horses in the race, if you count Malibu Style, who's only had one run at Ascot in the last two years, and that was in the winter bottom last season. So another one for the, uh, for the Eastern Status, isn't it? Really pleased to see a, a Group 1 performer in Voodoo Lad finally get that Group 1 win. A very deserving victory there for Voodoo Lad, and a nice bit of hometown flavour with Damien Oliver taking the ride there. All right, we do have nine races to get through, so we will take a look at the first race. It was won by the Celt. Agent Pippa Led was taken on with uh, Tango Aura, but the Celt, let's have a look at these figures because it's run pretty impressively. And How to Fly had found herself last at the 550, and so onto the side, Agent Pippa. It's the demerit filly that leads narrowly. The Great Southerners up running second, Tango Aura keeping her honest. Around the heels, the Celt down on the rails, Ginetti. How to Fly sneaking up for Pike just behind them. Come into the home bend around Jing Tang and Zuccaros. Agent Pippa Tango or the Kelt. They're the three in front at the 200. How to fly starting to run on well down the outside. The Kelt's gone to the lead though. It's the Kelt in front. How to fly. Pike forced to go for the whip. The Kelt's in front. The Kelt clinging on. How to fly won't get to the Kelt. The Kelt. The Kelt caused enough. Well, the Kelt on paper probably looked to settle a little bit further back, but was able to find a very nice spot in the 1 1. And if you have a look at this figure for the class benchmark, has run 5.7 lengths better. It's a really good performance, Mark. Yeah, this horse has improved out of sight since Unking put the blinkers back on him. So he's the follow horse out of this race, second good run in a row. I didn't think he was a 1,000 metre horse either, and uh, that's his first win over 1,000 metres for over two years. So he's the follow. The forgive, I think, is Jing Tang. They didn't go as fast as I thought they might. He was crowded at the 600. He was held up on straightening until about 150 from home. So willing to give him one more go. And the forget horse is Agent Pippa. Had some pressure applied here. They didn't go particularly hard, as I've mentioned already. She got a little bit of a breather around the turn, which is her way, but she didn't kick off the turn this time. I'm willing to bet around her. And you saw Jin Tang too just spring the gates and just had to be uh, pulled back a bit with the anticipated speed there. So uh, hopefully when it's able to land in a bit more of a forward position, it can uh, run a race. All right, race number two was taken out by a debutante. A lot thought that specialism wouldn't be able to be beaten, but of course Jericho Missile has come to the races and has been able to take out race number two. Three quarters in front, the undefeated Grey filly is running second. She just wanted to come off the bridle there and Staples has to really shake her up specialism. About two lengths, Jericho Missile. The stable mate Baby Blues further back in the field. Sacred King and last is Rapid Eye Movement around the home corner. Jebelation straightened in front. Specialism made the corner awkwardly. On the outside, then Jericho Missile putting in its run. Jebelation's the leader, but Specialism, she comes again. She's got herself balanced, and here comes Jericho Missile. Jericho Missile went to Specialism. Specialism and Jericho Missile in the crystal slipper. On the outside, Jericho Missile. Jericho Missile. Has... Well, it was a bit of a funny race for Specialism. She looked like she picked up late, but... At the end of the day, Jericho Missile was just a, a bit too good. Yes, certainly was. I think the Forgive Horse is specialism here. You know, third run into its campaign, didn't lead for the first time, didn't find the rail, probably better suited to the thousand as well. Still a decent run, the Forgive Horse specialism. The Forget Horse is your horse, Jevalay Show, uh, second poor run. Uh, ratings have been pretty similar in both of those runs. Led one of them, was behind in the other one. And the follow horse has to be the winner here, Jericho Missile. Really backed up those impressive trials with a strong day debut win. Looks like Harrow's got a nice horse going forwards towards those two-year-old features. Certainly does. Harrow has said that he will put Jericho Missile out for a spell now and bring uh, it back for the Magic Millions. Jevelation also heading to the paddock as she pulled up pretty shin sores. So uh, a few horses there, the two-year-olds heading out to the paddock. Uh, a horse that is showing no sign of needing to slow down was able to take out race three and it's Arcadia Prince working his way through the grades very nicely this preparation. Covered by Red Publisher, a length and a half to the favourite Arcadia Prince spotting the lead of five coming towards the 400 and then Sovereign Trade Broker last of all is Middle Earth. They approach the bend, 400 left to go, down on the inside, Mrs Brown's boy, three quarters spilling over about to move up and challenge and Red Publishers a length and a half away being followed by Arcadia Prince starting to run on over on the inside, Mrs Brown's boy spilling over, joins it now here comes Arcadia Prince on the outside of Red Publisher, 
150 to go and Arcadia Prince swept up, grabbed the lead, draws away from the... It's all over, Barbara shouting and Arcadia Prince is going to trot in it. All interest in the minor placings, Arcadia Prince... Arcadia Prince winning dominantly and has gone up five points for his efforts. So you would expect with the weight in post that he will get, the next time we'll see him will be in a 78 plus... How do you think he'll acquit himself there? I think he'll be winning. I think this is a black type horse. Looking at the forgive file here, sovereign trade. One of my follow horses, uh, Paddy Carberry, said he heard a respiratory noise when he was easing that horse down after the race. The sectionals home were pretty good by sovereign trade. Did finish seventh, forgive him. Uh, forget horse, unfortunately, again, is now stocks. That's three poor runs since it's come back. Has only beaten two horses home in those races. And the follow horse... Wow, impressive. Arcadia Prince, maybe not quite as good as his, uh, his sibling, Arcadia Queen, but outstanding late sectionals in what was a very on-pace favoured race. The other horses that placed in this race were one and two in the run. He was sixth. He was very, very impressive, expecting very good things to come from him in the future. Now, the next two races we'll have a look at are the two divisions of the 1500 metre race. Although they were run very, very differently, this first race that we'll take a look at was around 1.3 seconds faster to the 800. Let's take a look at Nordic King. 12 lengths off the pacemaker. Misty Lab will bring them to the home corner with 500 left to go. Misty Lad a length and a half. Song of Vincent stalks him coming up to the corner. He's about to let him go coming around the bend. Carberry, he's sitting there and he's about to pounce on that leader and then four in front of Nordic King. Oliver's got the whip on this away, followed by Platoon. It's a two-horse race at the moment. 250 to go. Mystic Lad, he fights from Song of Vincent. Further back, Nordic King runs on. Platoon's winding up. Misty Lad shook off Song of Vincent. Nordic King comes down the outside. Platoon Pike sends Nordic King up to join Misty Lad. He's done it again. Gets home to the... Now, to the eye, it looks like Misty Lad was travelling pretty quick, but we see that graphic on the screen mark that says plus 0.0. .0. What does that mean? Meant he went benchmark, overall benchmark, to the 600. So whilst he was leading for Paul Harvey and David Harrison, he wasn't going tremendously quick, certainly not bow count quick as I would call it. Mm -hmm. So looking at the, look at the forgive file here, platoon, you know, off the quick back up, off the, off the WA Guineas, fastest sectionals all the way home. This horse was 11 and a quarter lengths off the lead at the 800 metre mark, managed to place third, only beaten three quarters of a length. Forget horses, Song of Vincent, he was second in running, but was well off Misty Lad, so didn't go particularly hard. Slowest last two and 400 metres, and the follow horse, we already mentioned it, Platoon. I don't think this was a particularly strong race. I think he's probably the one I want to follow out of it. OK, let's have a look at race number five. It is this second division. Take special note of that first number, where it says that Rising Sea is travelling eight lengths slower than Benchmark. Born Blue, 600 left to go. Up nearing the bend, Rising Sea's been beautifully rated in front by Noski. He's about to open him up, coming into the home corner. Rising Sea's the leader. King Louis is second. Two lengths, Nakoni's boy down on the inside, looking to get around the hills ahead of Bakhtorio and a bit sketchy Sasso Circus. Where's Royal Command? Right back there, third from last, starting his run, but Rising Sea boots away from King Louis at the 200. Rising Sea's a length and a half in front. King Louis tries hard. A further three, Nakoni's Nakoni's boy, Rising Sea, Noski's got the whip on it. Down the outside comes Nakoni's boy, Royal Command with a brilliant finishing run late, but Rising Sea won. Well, it would appear that Rising Sea got away with murder out in front, and uh, when you go that slow, it's probably no surprise that Rising Sea was able to win. Yeah, murder, manslaughter, arm robbery, you name it, he got away with it. He's the forget horse for mine out of this race because he led all the way, he was advantaged by that very slow tempo. Of the first four home, all of them were in the first four in running apart from Royal Command. And I just think now he's won this race and the grade it was in, I think he might find it hard to win again. The Forgive Horse and the Follow Horse is the same one. It's Royal Command was 14 lengths slower than Benchmark to the 600. Did have the fastest sectionals all the way home. This horse was nearly eight lengths off the lead with just two furlongs to go. It was just an extraordinary performance. The way he was able to flash home and he copped that little bit of interference with Sasso Circus. So uh, probably very unlucky there. So uh, definitely one to follow in Royal Command. Although it's been a long time between drinks for Royal Command, but I think a win is just around the corner. All right, we'll take a quick break and we'll be back with more right after this.
Welcome back to the run of the race. Now, the next race we will take a look at was taken out by Father Nick. Joey Azapati able to weave his way up on the rail and uh, defeat probably a bit of an unlucky fine set. Just in front, Flower of Scotland keeping it company. And then captivated point parked out there, three deep working in the cheap seats. Fine set coiled up down on the inside, but with absolutely nowhere to go. In between horses, Turner's looking for a run as well with finally French. Over towards the rail, then coming into the corner, Father Nick. Count Carla the centre, followed by Force Element, Vermont Lady and Akiko. They start their runs to the outside, Paradise Square back inside of traffic at the 200. Flower of Scotland reaches the leader run for fine set, getting through Count Carla's, bursting through near the middle, and Father Nick getting a Dream Rails run. Father Nick coming at fine set, it's Father Nick scraping the Dulux. Brilliant ride to win. Father Nick. Now, Father Nick was the third place getter in his heat. It meant he didn't go up in weight, which I always think is a bit of an advantage in these sorts of races where they have the heats mm -hmm. coming to the final. How did you assess his run? Look, I thought he was a worthy winner. Good run up the rail by Joe Azapati there. In the, uh, the file, though, I'm going to look at the forgive horse being a Kiko from Geraldton of Sarah Childs. Had the top weight from a wide gate. Had to go back. Still finished off quite well in the circumstances. And I was just thinking this higher grade, unlike the Geraldton heat, it was just a little bit too hard for a Kiko. The forget horse, I'm forgetting finally French now. Just a non-winner, this horse. And I know they were looking for excuses. Lane Woods from the 600. But on paper, it was still a very plain effort from what was a decent gate. The follow horse, I'm going to go with the Luminise here. Finished fourth. It was an excellent run from what was a very wide gate. Good late sectionals. And that was his first run at Ascot as well. This horse has been campaigned mostly in the regions around Kalgoorlie and Esperance. be interesting to see this horse in this type of grade next time. Gee, if it's your follow horse, you'll be hoping you can get that $151 that it was paying on Saturday. It'd be nice to get juicy odds like that when it wins. All right, the next race is probably the one you've been waiting for. It is the Winterbottom Stakes. Sit back and enjoy the last few moments of the Winterbottom. We had the flying grey belter leading clearly. It's belter here in the Winterbottom. Two in front, the Victorian run sun second. Over on the fence, Rebel King is third. Then Ashlaw followed then by Durandell camped out wide. He's looking for a run with a three-year-old behind them. Vela Road, Vidora's back in heavy track. It is track pick as they set sail for the judge. Into the straight, belted kick to he clear. Ashlaw down the outside looming very quickly and down the outside is Malaguir and his enticing star as well. Ashler at the 150 enticing star joins it now joining it is Voodoo Lad. It's Voodoo Lad. Oliver draws the whip. Voodoo Lad grabs them. Voodoo Lad gets home to win it. Voodoo Lad for all. Voodoo Lad the winner of the Group 1 Winterbottom. When we look at this race mark in its entirety how do we look at that speed that Belter set? Yeah they certainly went quick here. Minus 9.5 Belter to the 600. Not unusual for a Group 1 sprint to be pretty quick. That was probably quicker than average, it has to be said, though. Looking at the file here, I think the forgive horses I'll have a bit, not just simply because I had it on top when I'd finally gone through the numbers, but he was, she was held up rather on straight, and she was further impeded until around the 100, and when Chris Parnham got off, I don't think he was too happy with his own ride. So the forgive horse is her. The forget horse is Rebel King, finished last. This is a noted fresh performer that was very, very plain. I know he was close to the speed, but nonetheless did finish last. And the follow horse, I think Enticing Star proved her a, a class on Saturday. First time she'd really been in a high pressure race. She handled it really, really well. And if it wasn't for Voodoo Lad and Damien Oliver, we'd be talking about a Group 1 winner. We certainly would. It was good to see her bounce back. She does head to the paddock now. I think she is looking for the paddock, and I'm not sure if we even saw the absolute best of her on Saturday because so often with these mares, it's about just getting them in, in real fine form, and that's when they really hold their best. But Enticing Star, definitely really exciting to look at going forward, particularly over what distance we see her over next, because I would think she'll be better over further. Yeah, look, I don't think she's a 1,200-metre horse in a million years. I've said a number of times on this show that I thought she was a lay in the winter bottom. She surprised me on Saturday. I think she's a miler, and if there wasn't a horse called Galaxy Star in the stable, I think she would have gone around in the, win in the railway stakes. Well, it's a nice problem to have, being Bob Peters, when you have uh, that level of quality horses amongst your stable. All right, there were still two races to go after the winter bottom, and it was all about Mitch Pateman taking out the last two. The first leg of his double was on a horse called Damn Ready. Taken on by illustrious tycoon there, but now the roughy kicks up. He's able to hold out the favour. Ice maker just in front from illustrious tycoon. Get the vibe is down on the inside third in the box seat to the turn, and Damn Ready fourth, well placed. Blizzard Express has covered ground. Kakadu searching for run coming into the home corner. Capanda in the middle, and Double Jeopardy now starts to sweep to the outside in the straight. Illustrious tycoon.
levels up to Icemaker. Dan Reddy's about to run on, get the vibe, searches for a run. Truly belong down on the rail and now Double Jeopardy joining it as well as Friars Gift. Double Jeopardy, Dan Reddy, Kakadu down the outside. Friars Gift, Dan Reddy, Double Jeopardy, Dan Reddy. Dan Reddy's won it by a hit. Double Je Dan Reddy, a last start winner on a Wednesday, was able to make the step up to Saturday grade. Yeah, certainly does like these firm tracks, does Dan Reddy. Doesn't make the fall. The horses that do are illustrious tycoon. Came back with an elevated heart rate. And Trevor Andrews has said that uh, there's going to be some corrective surgery undertaken on this horse before he runs again. So forgive illustrious tycoon. The forget horses truly belong. I think we're so used to seeing these Cerise and White Gallopers win. But I think this one is certainly not one of Bob's best. Was blocked for a clear run in the straight. But uh, willing to put a pen through. Truly belong. I think the follow horse might be double jeopardy here. First time around a bend for quite some time. Had been with Ellerton and Zara. At, uh, at Flemington had raced almost exclusively down the straight last preparation. Pretty decent first effort for the Pierce brothers. Gee, it was the first time I saw this horse as well and I was very impressed with him. So double jeopardy, I think, absolutely one to follow going forward throughout its preparation. There is still one race to go. It was a game taken out by Mitch Pateman and the big show. And as always, the addition of Bow Count means there was plenty of speed in the race. Count's gone further in front, 500 left to go. Hill has gone for the doctor. Coming up to the corner, Bow Count, he's raced away from them. He's about eight or nine in front of Mr. Relby. They'll need to get on their bikes to run him down at the top of the straight. He's got a big, big lead. Further back, Burger Time. Now the big show's cut back to the inside of Mr. Relby at the top of the straight. The gauge reading empty for Bow Count. He's still got a big lead at the 250, though. Here comes the Big Show, Bo Counts off his feet, the Big Show's cutting him down, Mr Relby followed by Arctic Stream, the Big Show swept past Bo Count and he's going to race away, goes on to win it easily, the Big Show, Bo Count, Arctic Stream, photo, second and third. Now Mark, with Bo Count setting a pace like that, it probably takes out a lot of the opposition away, the ones that aren't genuine stayers just can't keep going, but the Big Show... I think he's very pretty genuine. Yeah, and I think the trip and the tempo were the key to the big show. He was in a race with Bow Count uh, the time before that, but he was only over the 1,800 metres and the trip wasn't far enough. But uh, over that 2,100 metres, I think this horse may well go towards the Perth Cup. Very strong staying performance and uh, certainly the step up in trip suited him. Very good numbers as well. The Forgive Horse is magical charm. Got stuck behind a tiring runner from the 6 to the 4. Did come home with the fastest last 200. So forgiving magical charm. And I'm forgetting Bizingo. There's a fair few people on Saturday thought he might be ready third up. West Cameron was one. I was another as well. It was in my quaddy, but uh, it was out the back all the way and poor sectionals all the way home as well. All right. When we look at this nine race program in its entirety, Mark, Obviously, we had a Group 1 on the program, so I'm assuming that our best overall rating would go to Voodoo Lad. You'd be disappointed if it wasn't, given there was a lot of speed on that race and it was a Group 1. So Voodoo Lad was the best overall performance of the day. But the best class race in the day was a fair few of them. And the, We've already touched upon the, the Kelt in race number one was outstanding. But the big show in this 66 plus, minus 7.4 to the class. And I think over those type of trips, and we're looking forward now to the Perth Cup, we're only a month away. And there's more wins or certainly more really good runs in the big show. Absolutely. And what about the fastest last 200, 400 and 600? Well, Royal Command was a long way off the speed in his race, but he did finish off really well the last two and the last 400. And then How to Fly, not one of mine, this horse, but uh, last 600, 33.58 in the opening race on the card. I was able to get home pretty quickly there. All right, we will take a break. And on the other side of this, we'll be looking at the tipping competition and seeing if this week was a moving week. Were we able to find a new leader? We'll find out just after this. Think all betting companies hold their profits? Not Tab Touch. Not only do we give you a better betting experience on your mic, but out here, a portion of every bet funds a better racing industry. Helps better your race club. Come on! Oh! And helps better local sport. Hey, guys. So better your bet with Tab Touch. Don't let the game play you. Stay in control. Gamble responsibly. Welcome back to the run of the race. Now it is time to look at the tipping competition. And Mark, on Saturday, what would have the tipster of the week needed to tip to get the perfect score? All nine winners you would have needed. It didn't really matter too much whether you had your big bet on Voodoo Lad or Dam Ready. Voodoo Lad, slightly better performance than Dam Ready, just simply because of that place price. But you needed the Kelt, Jericho Missile, Arcadia Prince, Nordic Queen, Rising Sea, Father Nick, Voodoo Lad, Dam Ready and the Big Show. Well, let's have a look at what our winner selected. And I was pretty impressed with the performance here of Sean Mays. Yes, yeah, six winners uh, and a return in the other race as well with Spill and Over where he tried to go away from the obvious that was 
Arcadia Prince, but having the Celt is his big bet and having Dam ready as well. 1,471 points, an absolutely outstanding performance by Sean there. Hopefully he backed a few of those uh, winners as well, but if he didn't, at least there's a fantastic prize coming his way. Let's see what that does to the leaderboard. And we have still have BJF77 is still our leader with 5,821 points. But Brody36 is closing in. He's not that far away. 4,996. So it's uh, all heating up now. Yeah, five rounds to go. And it just takes another 30 or 40 to one shot to win, like it did for BJF with Mr. Albi right at the beginning of the competition and uh, you can close him very quickly there but it is the familiar names now on the leaderboard there just moving around but uh, one of them just needs that really big roughie to get up in the next few weeks. Well I wonder if that could happen this week. We've got some fantastic racing this week and one of the highlights will be the Sir Ernest Lestier Classic. Certainly will be and we'll have interstate gallopers in that race as well all being well. We'll have Junipal go around and Orsiena who's the horse scratched from the Guineas, and you look at the, the recent winners of that race, War Room last year, now in Hong Kong, two seasons ago it was Lou Saha, also in Hong Kong as well, and prior to that, Lightning Mavanes, who's racing in Victoria. So perhaps the secret is, you don't, if you don't want to, if you want to stay in Perth, don't win that race, because they all seem to go abroad, but uh, a good race for this weekend nonetheless. What about this uh, next race, the Jungle Dawn Classic? Bob Peters has just absolutely dominated that race. Yeah, he's won it for each of the last four years. A real charm in 2014. Then it was Ideal Image, Silver Stream and Celebrity Dream. So four out of four for Bob. And in these fillies and mares races, you can often really just back the three some white horses. Oh yeah, that's an easy formula, isn't it? The Towton Cup is one of the other feature events on the program and a very familiar horse won it last year. Yeah, Trap for Fools won this race last year en route to being the Ascot Horse of the Year. He strung, uh, I think, six wins together, I think with four or five with Taylor Stone in the saddle. And he's back in Perth, he's back as a Group 1 winner and he's back with Jared McLean. I cannot wait to see him this weekend. Let's have a look at the Kingston Town Classic and the past three winners of this Group 1 race. <laughs> They gave the wind burn with 150 to go. She's raced away. Here's Delicacy, though, coming after her. Delicacy, perfect reflection, perfect reflection. Delicacy, don't know. Perfect reflection, here comes Kawi winding up, White draws the whip, Scales of Justice at the 100, Stratum Star pegging it back, Scales of Justice, Stratum Star, Stratum Star, Scales of Justice, Scales of Justice, Stratum Star, Stratum Star, Stratum Star. Material man behind them, and now Akadar stars getting through the centre. Pinamu coming down the outside, they're across the track. Material man, Akadar star driving through Pinamu, Akadar star, Pinamu, Pinamu. It's Pinamu from Material Man driving second. Poonamu taking out last year's Kingston Town. What fantastic scenes they were. Well, who will it be this weekend? Oh, look, before the barriers, and we're doing this show on Tuesday morning, I think Arcadia Queen's going to take a stack of beating. She's a lot more versatile than Galaxy Star. She's got that 50 kilos weight. I think she's the one to beat. The 50 kilos is, makes it just so advantageous for her, doesn't it? And I guess what you've touched on it there is just that versatility. Mm. So it doesn't matter so much what happens to her at the barrier draw because she is so versatile. But of course, barriers are always all important. So we look forward to seeing those barriers when they come out. All right, racing does get underway on Saturday at 12.24. It is another nine race program. There is plenty to look forward to. So make sure you get out onto the track. Thanks for tuning in to the run of the race. We'll see you next week. He makes her bid for a little piece of it.